Manned missions to Mars may seem like a long way away, as NASA currently has their eyes set to get humans on Mars around the mid to late 2030s. But in reality, this timescale is very small, because there are a number of hurdles to overcome first. One of the most problematic being exposure to radiation in space. So, how bad is the radiation in space and on Mars? And what can we do about it? Radiation can mean a lot of different things. Light you are seeing now is a form of electromagnetic radiation. Radiation is also heat emanating from your central heating system. These are harmless or even beneficial to us humans. But astronauts need to be aware of a number of different types of space radiation. Types of radiation which can strip atoms from your body, alter your DNA and give you acute radiation sickness or even cause death. The main culprit for the dangerous radiation in our solar system is also our life giver, the Sun. It is constantly emitting light in many different frequencies and has a steady outflow of solar wind, which is highly energized protons, electrons and alpha particles, or in other words, subatomic particles. These particles and wavelengths can be dangerous to humans as it is, but every so often, Powerful events occur on the Sun's surface, called solar flares and coronal mass ejections. This is where, through a combination of factors, the Sun ejects billions of tons of highly energized particles into space. If a coronal mass ejection were to be aimed at an astronaut without much in the way of protection, it would make them very sick. However, while bad, this is not the biggest worry for scientists trying to overcome the obstacle of space radiation. There are particles hurtling through space which travel even faster than those ejected from the Sun, known as galactic cosmic rays. These are particles which were ejected from extremely energetic events, which could have occurred millions of years ago, like a supernova. They range from hydrogen atoms all the way to heavy elements like uranium, that have had their electrons stripped away, meaning just the nucleus of the atom remains. These particles have been accelerated to almost the speed of light. They can pass through an entire spaceship or body unimpeded, and any atoms they pass through will be ionized. Luckily on Earth, we have a number of natural protections which shelter us from all this radiation. The Earth's magnetic field is one, deflecting CMEs and some galactic cosmic radiation around the planet and to its poles, where it impacts the Earth's ionosphere, producing beautiful aurora. This magnetic field also protects Earth's atmosphere from being stripped away by the Sun's solar wind. And it's this atmosphere which protects us from any galactic cosmic radiation that got through the magnetic field, as these particles impact particles in the atmosphere before they can reach us on the ground. So, how do scientists hope to protect future astronauts outside of the Earth's magnetosphere and atmosphere? The first hurdle to overcome is the trip to Mars itself. Astronauts would realistically need at least 100 days to get to Mars from Earth, meaning they will be exposed to space radiation for that long. Luckily, particles from solar flares and CMEs can almost all be shielded by the spacecraft structure. However, High energy waves and galactic cosmic radiation can pass through the wall of a spacecraft. Recent rover missions to Mars measured how much radiation an astronaut would absorb en route, about 0.66 sievert, or the equivalent of getting a full body CAT scan every 4 to 5 days. In comparison, on Earth we might expect to absorb 0.0025 sieverts during the same period of time. The thing that really prevents radiation from reaching you is putting a lot of mass in the way. However, simply adding more weight to the walls of the spaceship itself would make liftoff prohibitively expensive. So, one of the methods currently being experimented in NASA's Orion capsule during periods of particularly high radiation is to hide in a makeshift bunker, putting as many bags of supplies around you as possible. Interestingly, the best element for protecting against galactic cosmic radiation 
is hydrogen. So scientists are also experimenting with the idea of storing water in the walls of the craft. Another method currently being investigated, that would also be useful on the surface of Mars, is to have spacesuits made of, or at least lined with, hydrogenated boron nitride nanotubes. This substance is strong, but also contains hydrogen atoms which would protect astronauts from radiation. This material could be used to make the structure of the spacecraft, as it is also good at withstanding very high temperatures. However, testing still needs to be done before it can be confirmed as a definite winner. The last option currently being experimented with is building a force field within the spaceship, kind of like a little replica of Earth's magnetosphere. However, while something like this can be built, it is not energy efficient enough to have on a spaceship just yet. But perhaps by the 2030s, technology will have advanced enough for this to become a real possibility. So, let's say that astronauts have arrived on Mars in the 2030s. Will the radiation situation get any better for them there? A little, but not anywhere near like on Earth. Mars has no magnetosphere and a very thin atmosphere, meaning protection on the surface is minimal. Although, it should be mentioned that the lower in altitude you go, the better you will be protected. Estimates put radiation exposure on the Martian surface at 0.64 millisieverts per day, which is just over NASA's acceptable radiation limit. However, the plan is not just to dump astronauts on the surface. One idea is that earlier missions could go to Mars to fabricate a base using Martian regolith and 3D printing in preparation for any future manned missions. Having the mass of Martian ground above any future settlement would protect the occupants from radiation, especially from dangerous CMEs. Should a CME come towards Mars, NASA's fleet of sun-observing spacecraft would warn astronauts outside the habitat to get inside with ample time to spare. So, while perhaps we have a lot more testing to do, it does seem like there are some workarounds in regards to space radiation. With all of them in place, it might be that space radiation can be kept to a low enough level to allow longer-term human exploration outside of Earth's magnetosphere. Do you think that mankind will ever be able to conquer space radiation? And what do you think of our chances to eventually be able to colonize the solar system? Or is it all a pipe dream? Or do you think there's an obstacle even more pressing than space radiation? Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching. All the best and see you next time.